So the refrigerator in our house is loaded with masterpieces of art done in crayon, homework with an A on it, and photos of our grandkids, all held up by magnets of you know, various sizes, shapes, and sayings. My favorite magnet was given to me by my wife. It says, my husband is the boss, and he has my permission to say so. As much as I would like to be the all-wise and all-powerful king of my castle, having absolute rule over my home, my wife and kids remind me in a variety of ways my decisions are not always right or the best way. We do have a king, though, that we can follow, if we choose, that is always right and gives us everything he has for our good. You know, as Americans, we have trouble relating to Christ as a king because, you know, we don't have royalty here. We are a republic where it's easy to see the individual's rights and freedoms are king. You know, no one's going to tell us what to do. A king, on the other hand, is someone you obey as soon as you are told to do it. You don't question his motives or say, I'll get around to it. You don't pick and choose what commands of the king you obey and those that you don't want to because, well, you just don't like them or they're inconvenient. If a king tells you to do something, you do it or else. Now, we may have trouble relating to a king because we're born in America, but as Catholics, we should understand we have a king that we are invited to follow. Kings and rulers of this world take over lands by force. They impose and enforce those rules under the threat of punishment or even death. If they were to pass by, you better drop your gaze and don't dare approach them. As Christians, we have a king that we can call by his first name. Our king doesn't conquer lands, he conquers people's hearts by invitation and love. Our king doesn't bring the fear of death with his rules, he destroys death so we can live forever. You know, in movies and books, and probably in real life too, people do whatever it takes to win their earthly king's favor. They often resort to tricks, lies, and even murder to win a portion of the riches the king has if we choose to follow Jesus as our king, we can't force or trick our way into his kingdom. It's only by emptying ourselves and giving ourselves away in love to others as we heard in our gospel that we can find the treasures he has, for store, has in store for us in his kingdom. As we die to ourselves to live for Christ and others, slowly but, slowly but surely we journey towards Christ's kingdom. And in the process, we find our true self, the person that God created us to be. You see, we are born with a false self, a mask of selfishness and sin. We need to lose this false self, this mask that we wear and try so hard to defend and build up so that we feel like someone, so we matter in the eyes of the world. You know, as Jesus hung on the cross, that's what the good thief did. In front of all those people in horrible pain, he took off his mask, admitted his sins, and accepted love as his king. Now, what a strange way to gain entrance into the glorious and eternal kingdom that's been prepared for us. We're not expected to be good enough. We're not expected to be smart or strong enough. We are asked to accept the unconditional love of Jesus Christ. We're asked to die with our king to find who we truly are in him. If we choose not to do this, if we continue to live the lie of who we are not, the false self is what we will take to stand before our king on judgment day, and he will say to us, depart from me. I don't know who you are. Dying to ourselves may be words that are uncomfortable to hear and hard to accomplish. Our society doesn't make this easy and promotes the opposite. And we don't see a castle off on the horizon that we can focus on or signs along the way that say, Kingdom of Jesus, 12 miles ahead. Fortunately, Jesus hasn't left us to wander about, not knowing which direction to go. He's given us a clear path to find his kingdom. The holy, catholic, and apostolic church is the vehicle that Christ chose to show us how to live so that we can inherit his kingdom. In our stubborn ways, though, of our false self, we say that we can do it our way, that we can pick and choose what works for us in regards to faith and morals. Friends, we need to put to death our ego. 
I mean, do we create ourselves? Do we create the world and the universe and everything in it? Do we rise from the dead? Do we think we know better than God? Thankfully, our king is patient and doesn't destroy or disown us when we fail to do what he commands. Our false self will rule over us until we understand that Jesus only wants what's best for us. There are no ulterior motives to be suspicious of. Our king loves us despite all the effort we spend trying to run from his love. Our king doesn't want to rule over us to deny us our freedom. By letting go and being absorbed into him, we find who we truly are and live freer than we can ever imagine. By finding love, Jesus, at our core, by taking off the mask and being the person God created us to be, we look forward to paradise in heaven, but we can also enjoy some of it now. How good it is to be free of all that will turn to dust one day. How good it is to stop defending this false person selfishness and society has created. You know, Jesus came to take our sins to the cross, but he also came so that we have his example of how to live this life on earth. Though he was in the form of God, Christ emptied himself and became man, emptying himself and being obedient to the Father. The Creator became his creature and lived with sinners. Jesus was considered a sinner. He was put to death as a blasphemer, as one who revolted against the holiness of God. So God himself was put to death on the cross because he did not measure up to man's conception of God. He wasn't holy enough. He wasn't holy in the way they'd expected, been expected to believe. Therefore, he was not God at all, just a man that needed to be destroyed because they were blind to real love. By dying on the cross, Jesus destroyed sin and death, but also our misconception of God, of what real love is and who we are called to be. And one of the paradoxes we discover following Christ is that a person cannot enter into the deepest center of themselves to find who they really are and pass through that center into God unless that person is able to pass entirely out of themselves and empty themselves and giving themselves to others in the purity of selfless love, just as Jesus did. To do this and to serve God, we must face and accept the decision to love in spite of all unworthiness, either in ourself or in our neighbor. To find God in who we are meant to be, we must choose love as our very center of being and the foundation of all that we do. I mean, if I close and lock the door of my heart, not allowing Jesus to be all in me, when I protect the false self, that I can't love you the way God created me to love and to mirror his love for you in the way that no other person on earth can. By, get, by living the mask of my false self, I rob you of the love that God has for you in me. Christ is, either, Christ is a king of pure love, and Christ is either the king of our entire life or he's not king at all. We have a choice. We can follow the kings and rulers of this world who encourage us to build up the walls of our false self. They use us up for their own pleasure and then toss us aside like yesterday's trash. They give us nothing except ideas and things that will turn to dust. Or we can trust Jesus as our king, the one who gave us everything, including his life, so that we can inherit his kingdom and eternal glory in heaven.